That's how we normally define bounded subsets. That's the definition of it. Oh. Yeah. So bounded subset, it's the one which you can submerge into a, into a ball centered in the origin. It's, it's said right here in the definition. A set amiga in n-dimensional space is called bounded if there is a m number such that you see the distance from any point of your set to the origin doesn't exceed this m. So if this red spot here is your omega, any point within the omega from the origin, it's no longer than distance m. Or geometrically speaking, you just entirely submerge your, submerge your red spot, your omega, into this green ball, which sits in the origin. There are two examples of formal justification. There are two examples here. Formal justification, something is bounded. Uh, yeah, so here, this first example, it says that any ball is a bounded set, not specifically centered at the origin. See, this is a ball with the point centered at the point x naught. It is a bounded set. It is it sounds like an obvious statement from our like a sort of domestic logic. But formally, if you want to see it through this definition, that's a few lines you have to put together. And these are the few these are the few lines. Look at this what we say. We take x from this ball, which we want to convince everyone that it is bounded. And we, again, you see, it's, the definition says there is. So when you, when you prove that something is bounded, your job is to present this, M, to make some substance under this there is claim. Here's a substance. Here's a choice for the M, you see? We say, let's just choose the epsilon, which was the radius of the original ball, plus the distance from the center of this ball to the origin. If I make a choice of M like so, then everything works, and that's the argument which convince everyone that it, 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 is, it, it does work. Look at this. If I measure the distance from this x point, randomly chosen from the, this epsilon ball, to the origin, I can use triangle inequality. This is a step. That's a triangle inequality step. X to, well, from x to x naught, from x naught to zero. First piece is controlled by epsilon because it comes from this ball. Second piece well, second piece, just we keep it as it is, but this together, this is a number M we chose. And that, that's the end of it. Yeah. Probably I should also mention that the M, the choice of M this slide presents, this choice is independent of this randomly chosen point X. That's important. Because this M, in a definition, it must be 1M for every point within the set Amiga you're testing to be bounded or not. You can't just alter your choice of M for any for, for different points. Yeah. Okay. Probably it's too much already for this relatively simple example. That's another example of Jonathan Kress. It's a set which is unbounded. Again, from our experience with these sort of sets, we, it, it seems like a quite natural thing that is unbounded. But here's a few lines which formally justify that. We just, let's just read through these lines. So the set itself is this set. It's a set of points such that x, y less than 1. Geometrically, we know that's the area between two hyperbola branches. Here it is. So geometrically, we having this sense that this is not bounded because you can stretch it infinitely in, into this, in the second quadrant and fourth quadrant. But that's how you formally can convince everyone that this is so. Look at this. Well, it's done by contradiction, actually. See, it says suppose, it's the opposite, it's a contrary assumption. Suppose that Amiga is you, you were able to sub submerge this amiga into some ball of some radius m, send it at the origin. Imagine that happened. So it's a contrary argument. Look what it says. It says now, if you take this particular point, m plus 1, 0, and if you test for this point the condition of the amiga set, it works, because the product is 0, right? And that's less than 1, so this point also must be within the set. But this, this point is not within the ball, and that's a contradiction, you see? You, you just assume that it is, the set is within some fixed ball, and then you produce a point within the set which falls outside that ball. That's the verification that the point falls outside that ball. That's the contradiction and the end of it. Uh, 